Ah, this old chestnut. Seven things you need to go buy right now, sheeple. Don't let another second go by without purchasing these tools. Nah, I'm not here to tell you to run out and drop a ton of coin on stuff right now. Rather, to shine a light on a handful of things that I've put in my toolbox that have really helped me go from Yam and Spite's exhaust and tail tidy shop to Yam and Spite's exhaust, tail tidy, and general maintenance emporium. These things are seven tools that I've bought to help make my life easier when it comes to basic maintenance that I think everyone should own. The best part about all this stuff on the list is that they can be used for multiple things because to quote the most intelligent Jake Peralta, stuff can do two things. Ever since that moment, I too have been using a sunglasses case as a wallet. Now these tools aren't specific to dirt boys, street boys, cruiser boys, or any other kind of boy, and they're not in any order since they're all intended to do their job really well. If I were to recommend picking this stuff up, it's as a replacement for existing tools in your toolkit rather than buying it right away when you're just starting out. Okay, now with all that being said, number one is a good multi-tool. No doubt you've seen me bust out my personal multi-tool in more than one video, and that's because it's just so darn useful. You got a knife, you got a saw, you got a file, screwdriver with a bunch of different drivers, scissors, and a bottle opener so you can crack open some mid-work refreshments. Better still, you've got a nice set of pliers and wire cutters baked in. A multi-tool is one of those things that you might underestimate until you start carrying one. I can tune my carbs, pull plastics off a bike, and open a beer all with one tool. Now you don't need to go full potato like me and run out and get yourself a custom engraved special edition Leatherman. Instead, you should just go out and get any multi-tool out there, from the simple $30 Home Depot kind to the $15 Harbor Freight Tools kind. Some things you'll definitely want to have in that tool are a straight blade, because honestly serrated sheep's foot blades are more of a pain in the ass than anything, a file with a coarse side and a fine side, and a screwdriver with replaceable heads so that you can tackle all sorts of different nuts and bolts. I've even seen some with attachable sockets in case you want to be able to take apart your entire motorcycle with one tool. I might look like a bit of a dork wearing my multi-tool on my belt every day, but the number of times I've pulled it out to solve a problem makes it worth looking like a budget Batman. Also, remember, it opens beer! Enough said. One thing that I've found helpful on more than one occasion while working on my motorcycles is my Rockform phone case. Yes, this is an ad read, and no, it's not taking up one of the spots on the list, but seriously, hear me out. Everyone wrenching on their motorcycle probably has a YouTube video pulled up on their phone showing exactly what they're supposed to do, and wouldn't it be nice to actually see what that video is talking about at the same time you're working on your motorcycle? Well, with the magnetic phone case, you can pop it on the side of your bike, your lift, or wherever, and you can have a hands-free look at what you're doing without having to take off your gloves or worry about getting oil or grease all over your phone. I use my Rockform case all the time, just slapping it on the side of my DRZ while we're wrenching on it so I can have torque specs at hand and I don't need to have a third arm to hold my phone. If you think it's just a gimmick, you'd be surprised how useful it actually is. The best part is that you can pop it on the handlebar mount and ride away with your phone securely on your bars. You can use Bluetooth speakers for some tunes while you're wrenching or just grab a sport ring and use it as a phone stand. Check out Rockform's entire line of products by clicking in that link down below and using the code YN25 to get 25% off your order. Next up on the list are helicoils, although you don't need to use helicoils specifically. Basically, any thread replacer tool is just fine, be it time certs, helicoils, or whatever they have at AutoZone. But what are they and how do they work? Well, if you've ever been doing an oil change on your motorcycle and used that old calibrated elbow to snug down your drain bolt only to have the steel bolt rip the threads out of the aluminum engine case, then you probably know what these are for. If you've never had that happened, congratulations on using a torque wrench. And if you have, you understand the pain known only to those who have rendered their motorcycle inoperable thanks to a little whoopsie daisy. Now you could go the usual way and use a tap and die to increase the size of the hole, but then you need to buy a new drain plug and new threads aren't always as strong as the original ones, meaning that you're likely going to need to retap the threads again later. Instead, thread repair tools replace stock threads with steel ones of the same pitch and size so you can reuse the original drain bolt. They make thread repair kits in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and they come with a specific tool matching that same size perfectly for that snug fit. Just be sure to be super duper careful when you drill out the old threads. If your bit goes in at even a little bit of an angle, you can cause more damage. Also, don't forget to collect any of the shavings from inside of that hole, especially if you're fixing an oil drain plug. Third, carb cleaner. But Spite, I followed your advice never to get a carbureted motorcycle because I don't hate myself. Why should I have carb cleaner lying? 
around. Because carb cleaner is a great way to get oil and gunk off of gasketing surfaces or clean crap from underneath your case covers and remove old grease from pivot points. Carb cleaner is like WD-40 and isopropyl alcohol that did the fusion dance from Dragon Ball Z. It's got the same degunkifying effect as WD-40 and evaporates quickly like isopropyl, but it is an environmental catastrophe in a can. Let's take a super common pivot point that you're not paying any attention to, your handlebar levers. Both your clutch and your brake lever rotate on a pivot point that needs to be cleaned and re-lubed every so often that they can get road gunk and grime that makes them harder to pull off of there. Admittedly, cleaning that's really not going to improve too much, but it is still a little bit annoying when you go to grab your lever and it gets sticky. A quick spritz of carb cleaner will instantly remove all that built up crud on there and leave you with a nice clean surface for fresh lube. One word of advice though, don't spray carb cleaner inside and wear gloves and goggles or at least safety glasses. It's some really nasty stuff and you do not want to be huffing down those fumes or getting it into your eyes, so make sure to spritz with caution. You can also substitute carb cleaner for brake cleaner if you want, they're functionally identical. Number four, deep sockets or long Allen socket. Have you ever been wrenching on your bike and gone to remove a bolt only to find that you don't have a socket long enough to reach that nut? Either there's too much thread showing or it's buried under a bunch of plastic or just in a weird spot. It happens to me all the time, so I ran out and bought a set of deep sockets and long Allen sockets. Let's start out with the obvious. You need to have at least one deep socket floating around in your toolbox specifically for pulling out spark plugs. They vary in size, so check your manual and buy the one that you know you're going to need. In my case with the DRZ400, it requires a 5 8 bit, but who knows what my KTM needs. Probably need to order some special tool made by one dude in Lederhosen in the mountains of Austria to be shipped here via a pair of European swallows who are carrying it together on a line. See who gets that reference. Anyways, if you're lucky, your spark plug will match the tool dimensions of the rest of your bike, i.e. metric or SAE, and then you can just pick it up as part of a bigger set of deep sockets. You'll be surprised how often you reach for one. As for the long Allen sockets, they're super handy at getting to hard to reach fasteners that hold things like exhaust bolts in place, and they're usually tucked behind things like your radiator. It's best to get a set of those with the ball tips at the end so that you can come at the bolt from a different angle. Again, it sounds really specialized, and you're thinking you might only use it for one thing, but you'll be surprised how often you reach for it. Number five, a JIS screwdriver. If you don't know what JIS stands for, it's Japanese Industrial Standard, and regardless of whether you're on a Ducati, a Harley, or a Kawasaki, you'll find that using a Japanese Industrial Standard screwdriver, even on non-JIS screws, leads to less stripped out screws. Why? Because of what each screwdriver was meant to do. The standard Phillips head isn't perfectly straight. All the blades on the screwdriver come together at an angle, meaning that someone working on a factory line somewhere couldn't over-tighten a screw, or you couldn't go full send on a bolt, and accidentally snap it off in your motorcycle. Essentially, it was designed to strip out screws, whereas JIS screwdrivers are perfectly straight edges, allowing for you to grab the screws more effectively. Yes, it does mean that you can accidentally over-torque a bolt a lot easier, so you need to exercise some restraint and not go full send. However, it's worth it, especially on bolts that you're going to be removing over and over again. For example, the screws holding your front reservoir cover on, or some of your fairing bolts. If you're curious how to identify a Japanese industrial stand screw, usually they have a little dot on the screw head, or sometimes they don't, like the float bowl screws on the DRZ400 stock carburetor. Seriously, Suzuki, you only put four JIS screws on the entire motorcycle, and they're in the one place that's the hardest to remove when you strip them. Nice work. Number six, a vacuum brake bleeder. Okay, now normally I'm very much against vacuum bleeders. I think it's really easy to accidentally pull too much fluid out, introduce an air bubble into your brake line, have to start all over again, but they do make the job way easier. I have to hand it to you. Normally when you're bleeding your brakes, you have to go through this whole rigmarole of slowly cracking the lock nut, then pumping fluid over and over and over again. And it's a giant pain in the butt, especially on bikes with ABS circuits and multiple calipers. In situations like that, it's best just to have a vacuum bleeder, but get yourself a hand pump one, not one of the electric pumps. That way you can directly control how much fluid you're pulling out. Not only will it make bleeding your brakes super duper 
super easy, but it can also help if you accidentally overfill your oil. We've all been there. Your bike calls for four and a half quarts and you accidentally dump closer to five than you meant to. But what are you going to do about it? Are you going to clean your catch pan, remove the drain bolt, drain all the oil, and then put exactly the right volume in? Or you could just reach for the vacuum bleeder and carefully remove all the excess oil until you have the right amount. I actually overfilled the DRZ the other day when I was fixing an oil leak on the bike, and I used a vacuum bleeder we had just lying around to pull a few extra ounces out. It only took like 30 seconds. Once you pick one of these up, you'll wonder how you ever got by without one. Oh, and we have them on sale on YN Moto, by the way. Get yourself a brake bleeder and maybe some entries to win a motorcycle. Why not get the both at the same time? It's really easy. Click that link down below. The last thing that you're going to want to have in your toolkit is a cable lube tool. This is one of the only super specialized tools on the list, and it's really only good at doing one thing, but that one thing it does is super, super important. If you're riding around on an older motorcycle, or perhaps one that's not as fancy as others, you've probably got a cable clutch and throttle cables. Those need to be lubricated every few months to make sure that there's no metal or plastic shavings, or just to eliminate dirt buildup. It'll increase the life of your cables, and it'll make them feel better at the same time. What these tools do is create a seal around the sheathing for forcing any of the lube to go down the cable instead of spraying all over your handlebars. Sometimes you can get by by just unscrewing the adjusters and blasting lube down through the gap, but with the lube tool, you won't have to worry about readjusting your cables when you're... Pro tip, when you're lubing your cables, make sure to move the throttle or lever so that any crap caught between the steel cable and the plastic sheathing moves down the cable with the fluid. Otherwise, you're just spraying fancy WD-40 on your bike for no reason. Fact. Beaver College changed its name to Arcadia in 2001, in part because anti-porn filters blocked access to the school's website. Goodbye. Keep watching Yammy Noob. 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 Keep watching Yammy Noob.